Today's video, we're going to look at how we can very quickly sort of fix faces and some mistakes in our images made through Midjourney or other AI art platforms. So I have this photo of an elf. Uh, the face doesn't look too bad, but there's still a few things about it that aren't quite right. And his hand is definitely a mess. And I'm going to go through in Photoshop and show you how you can fix this up, but also another tool which we're going to start off with to try and work on the face that we're going to import into Photoshop called GFP GAN. So I'm going to pop a link in the description below or you can just Google Hugging Face GFP GAN and we're going to switch over to GFP GAN now and this is the page you'll see on Hugging Face and you'll get this little interface here. I'm going to drag my elf into here. I'm going to choose GFP GAN version 1.3 and the rescaling factor. You can scale this up if you want to resize. I'm going to stick it into as one in this video and I'm going to click submit. And you can see we've got a face here which looks a little bit more realistic. Maybe there's a few things about it we like or don't like. Either way, I'm going to download this image and, open and import it into my document. Now, before I go too far, I've actually got the Topaz Gigapixel Upscaler open here. And what I'm going to do is actually enlarge both the image I just made and the original so we can actually work with a higher resolution image. So I'm gonna drag both of those in here and I'm going to save both in the same directory. And now both these images are done. However, I have noticed that the GFP GAN image was actually smaller. So they're actually two different resolutions, but that's okay because we're gonna look at how to line those up so you get a good, crisp, perfect image anyway. So I've opened both these files up in Photoshop after I've upscaled them so I have a bit of bit to play with and both are looking pretty good, neither are perfect, but I'd like to try and get the best out of both faces and also work on the hand. So it actually requires you to sort of use Photoshop a little bit like a digital artist as opposed to just relying on AI art. It's always good to have some skill to pop on top of it. What I'm actually going to do is I've got the original image here, which is larger than this one over here. And the size is, if I go to image, image size, I can see it's... 9216 by 6144. So I'm going to copy that width, 9216 by 6144, tab across. So I go here to image, image size, paste in that size of 9216. I try to make sure I've preserved details too or preserved details on to get a really good upscale from, what, from the uh, image that's there and click OK. And now I've got two images that are the same size. Now there is a, uh, an issue. The eyes here aren't as green as the original, but the facial features are a little bit more consistent. So I'm going to actually select this entire image. Now they're both the exact same size, I'm just going to hit Control A, or I think it's Command A for Mac, or you can hit Select All at the top. I'm gonna to edit and copy, head over to the new one and hit Edit, Paste. And now we actually have, if I hit, I've actually got a lot of stuff turned off so we can see what's going on here. We can hit tab to turn all my sidebars back on. I've got my layers panel down here with two layers. And if you can't see that, go to window and layers to bring up your layers palette. So what I'm actually gonna do now, is start masking out sections which I think don't look good. So I'm actually going to select the top layer, whichever one I have on the top, and click on this little square with a circle on it to create a mask. And now I'm going to actually kind of remove the things I don't like about this particular face. Because if I remove this, even a lot of the wrinkles are gone and maybe I want to keep the wrinkles in there. So I've got my mask selected and as long as this is highlighted, I can grab my brush, make sure I have black on the left for my foreground and I make my brush size, sorry, my brush size up here big, bring the hardness down a bit so it's nice and soft. And now I can hit caps lock to see how big the brush size is and now I can start to actually remove sections from this if I go too far I can actually hit X on my keyboard or switch this to the to white to bring it back in so what I'm essentially going to do is switch back to the black and while I have this selected I'm going to remove the bits and pieces that I don't want to reveal the face underneath So now my face is looking a bit better. I've actually managed to maintain a lot of those wrinkles instead of lose them. The pupil here does look a bit funny, so I'm going to just touch that up. And I've tried to keep the top half of the eye here because the image underneath actually has an eyelid. So I need to zoom in a little bit. I can use the zoom tool or I'm just holding that alt and using my mouse wheel. And I might need to just finely tune 
this information around here. Zoom back out with my mouse wheel, holding down Alt, and I've got things looking the way I want. He looks a bit kooky, which is what I want in this image, and it's starting to take a bit of shape. But as we noticed before, if I click to this image, we have green eyebrows and green pupils. So I need to actually learn some of the principles of Photoshop to get that looking the way I want. So the easy way of doing that is over in my layers panel here on the right, I'm going to click the plus button to add a new layer. And then I'm going to click on these blend modes here and choose color. And now where I have my white here, I'm going to click on it and choose a nice bright green, something that sort of matches. Maybe I can pick a color from here and go up somewhere nice and bright. I get my brush, make sure that it's nice and sort of around the size I want. And because I have this layer selected, I'm gonna call it green overlay. I can now draw that color in. And because I have the color blend, it will actually tint everything underneath it the same color. And now we have the green eyes. However, when I go over this, it's a little bit too green. As you can see here, I'm just gonna hit Control Z or Command Z, just undo or edit, undo. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change this color to a sort of a darker color, a darker green that's a little bit less bright. And I'm also going to just make the flow a little bit less, maybe 38 and experiment with that. And as I draw that on, I get my green brows. Again, they're still a bit bright, so I'm just gonna to touch it up by grabbing the eraser tool on the left here. I'm gonna make the size of this brush pretty big and just sort of try and tone it down. Try not to cut to actually hit the pupils here. One thing you can do is grab this selection tool, select the area you want to edit so you don't accidentally remove any of the pupil color. I go back to my brush, sorry, back to my eraser and slowly adjust some of the green out. And now we have a bit more of a green effect. It's not the same, but about the same kind of look as we had before. So now we've actually fixed the face on this image. If we look at the original, I'm actually going to just go here, copy it again. I'm gonna paste it on top and turn it off. So now we can see what it looked like before and after. And we can see that there's actually some improvements. Things are looking a bit more realistic. The next step is this hand. If I zoom in, whoops, I click on the layout. If I hit Z, Z on my keyboard or this magnifying glass, I can zoom in by dragging and this hand is an absolute mess. What I can do is I've actually taken a photo of my own, ha own hand and I'm not going to just paste it in there, although if that works, that's totally fine. And what I've done is I've just copied it from my browser because I sent it to myself via Messenger and I'm pasting it in. Now this is not the hand that I want. I'm simply using it as a reference. So if I just take this layer with my hand on it, you can see that little bit there. I can bring the opacity down a bit until I can just see it. Now I wanna to go to edit and free transform here, or I hit control T. And I try to just overlay that roughly where I want it. And if I zoom, I'm gonna to have to use the space bar, hold down space bar to move around. Now my hand, I want to have longer fingers on this, like the guy does in the image. I just want to fix up some of the issues with the proportion. So if I've got this here, I can sort of see where it goes and I can see that these fingers need to meet up. I can actually use this reference to see that my fingers need to meet up with this finger and I need to sort of, that thumb is probably not, not a bad position. I really just need to get these looking a bit better. So what I'm gonna do is click on the layer at the top here and I'm going to grab this path tool down on the left. And what I do is I click to create a point. This time I click and hold and I can use these handles to create some curves. And I click and hold and I'm just gonna zoom in a little bit. And every time I stop to just click, if I just click once, it creates a point and I can click and hold on the curves to slowly sort of adjust this selection. Once again, holding, and then I try to click directly on the end, you see that little circle, to close that path. So this has got now shape one. If I hold down, if I right click, I can select this. It's actually, there's a lot of options here. So I'm just gonna hold down control. You can see a little square pop up. I believe it's all command. Click on that and it's produced a selection. 
and I'm going to hit this little I to turn off the layer click on the layer that I want to copy from and then I just simply go edit copy edit paste or control V control C and control V so now if I zoom out a little bit once again holding down alt and the control wheel uh, the mouse wheel I can now hit control T or command T for free transform and I can just enlarge this now it's going to, be going to enlarge out of proportion because I have this clicked this link clicked I can either turn it off and move it like this or I prefer to leave it on and I just hold down shift and this looks pretty horrible as well but as long as I play around with it a bit this is looking a little bit more natural if I ignore some of the stuff in the background and I can always adjust this afterwards I click OK and those fingers look like they're in a better position but this is still a bit messed up here so what I'm actually going to do now is go edit transform warp now I can actually move this corner in to try and use these handles to move the actual image around I can even just grab the center and move that around until I get it into a good position and I hit enter or the tick button at the top so now the fingers are looking pretty good the cutout job is a bit rough but we're gonna come back to that for now I can see I've got a bit of information sticking out at the top so I'm going to grab my lasso tool or my polygon lasso tool I'm gonna to just select around the top here select this layer and then I'm going to go to edit content aware fill and you'll notice it kind of blurs that out if I want to take a bit more control I want to make sure I use my brush here with the minus I can hold down alt or I can hit here plus or minus I want to minus and zoom out I want to minus as much of the hand around it as possible so it relies on the background once I've got something here I'm happy with I click OK and now I can actually hit Control D or Command D to unselect that and the top of the fingers are now looking a bit better so now we need to start making some more minor adjustments so I, once again I've still got this layer clicked I'm going to use my stamp tool now the stamp tool now enables me to copy certain areas into place so I've actually got the stamp tool I'm going to choose a much different brush than that let's go up the top and choose my soft round brush I'm going to hold down Alt because I've got this layer selected and not the mask I want to make sure the image is selected I hold down alt on the edge of his hand here move up and I can see it's sort of showing me what will happen if I start painting there so I start painting painting up painting up and now things are meeting and when I go to this layer with the fingers on it again I can click this square with a circle in it and I can use my masking tool again so I grab my brush grab the black and start just making a few edits to try and smooth that up now if you want to get a harder edge you can move the hardness right up and kind of paint that in place like this and you get a much more solid edge now what I want to do also because I have some artifacts around the fingers here that don't look as good I'm going to zoom in grab my brush the hardness and the size down and I'm going to make some fine adjustments to the edges now when I zoom out the hand is looking a little bit more human there's still some funny issues going on here down the side so once again I can click on that and I can just make further adjustments I can say use my stamp tool again so the stamp tool here if you hover or if you hold down it'll say clone stamp tool so the clone stamp tool I'm gonna get my brush a little bigger make sure that's selected and I can again just make some adjustments and I can also go back and reselect an area if I want to make sure it's looking the way I want it to and just be careful not to go over the top of that thumb and even this line here if I want to get rid of that I can just decrease the size of my brush and just click and paint over that and even some of this here and now the hand doesn't look perfect but it looks a bit better than before so now we've got our image it's looking pretty, pretty decent for and we've fixed up a few issues so what if I want to adjust some colors and lighting what I'm going to do is scroll up to the top now first of all before we go any further let's just compare this we see the hand the face it's looking a bit nasty now it's looking a bit better 
Now, if I want to add in and, sh and play with the colors a little bit, I can click on this top layer, whatever layer is on top, doesn't matter which layer it is. I go down to this circle, the black and the white through it, and I can add in a few different adjustment layers. The first one I'm gonna add in is hue and saturation. Because what I can do is I can choose to pump the colors up or bring them down. If I want to, I can do something a little bit cool and actually bring the saturation down. And then if I go up the top here to greens, I can actually bring the greens up and do the same again by clicking on reds. Now the red has also adjusted the skin. There's actually a little slider down here which shows what this adjustment I'm doing under reds will affect. And I want it to affect mainly just the red. So if I drag this little slider in here, everywhere between here and there will actually have varying levels of adjustment. I just need to bring that in and you can see I get this nice muted color look with strong red nose and strong greens. And on top of that, I can now add in another adjustment layer. This is an adjustment layer down here, the circle. I go curves, and now I can actually bring the darkness down a bit, increase the light. Learning how to use curves can be a bit difficult, but ultimately, if you look at these two bars, if the black is in the corner down, down the bottom and white is up the top, then if I adjust things in this top right-hand corner and move it up, it'll make the light colors lighter. If I bring that down, it'll make the light colors darker. And if I take the bottom left-hand corner, move that up, it'll make the dark colors lighter or the dark colors darker. Have a bit of a play with it and see what you get. You can always hit reset or auto, but uh, I like to get a nice high contrast look. And so now I've actually adjusted this image and fixed a few mistakes in it. And I'm actually gonna do another video, which I will link up at the end of this one showing you how to make some edits to your images to composite them and get some cool effects and make use of multiple images in AI art to help improve what you're creating by taking a bit more control of the bits and pieces within the image. Otherwise, uh, check out the video. It's going to be in the description. All the links to all the tools of this video will be in the description, including Photoshop, GFPGAN, Topaz, Gigapixel. Uh, and we're actually going to link off to another video in a minute on the screen to show you how to start compositing and editing photos. Otherwise, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Otherwise, have a great day. I hope to see you again soon.